Oh, Thank okay. you guys. For, this isn't freezing cold anywhere in the world. <laughs> Only San Franciscans would be debilitated by this temperature. Um, so yeah, I have just had this experience of spending three days building live in front of a crowd. Many of you who stood here for hours and hours and hours. Um, I really, I, I didn't know what to expect when I embarked upon this. I actually don't love it being watched while I solve problems. <laughs> but I move towards the things that I fear, and that was the case here. Um, I will tell you that I did a lot of pre-prep of this device before I showed up. Um, my, my shop assistant, Aaron, welded uh, 24 triangles, tons of bushings. He made me Teflon washers because apparently you can't buy those. Uh, and so we showed up with enough that I thought that I could probably put this together in a few hours. Um, and then <laughs> it ended up in a grueling slog where we, I really wasn't sure until this afternoon that it was going to work at all. And then as I was driving home, actually specifically Joey, my tested cameraman, this is Adam, but Joey was filming me this last three days. Joey was like delighted and surprised that it worked. <laughs> And I thought, that's a familiar feeling. Oh, right, I get the same thing from my Mythbusters cameraman. <laughs> so I realized that what I ended up doing here is the same thing I've been doing for 15 years, which is biting off a little more than I can chew, building something complicated while people watch, having it not work for a huge portion of the time, and then getting it to work at the last minute. <laughs> um, I, 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 I want to talk about what went wrong, because I put this whole thing together, and boy, it was a, a lesson in how distributed the system is, I knew that, um, but also how critical all the measurements were. And there was a gentleman who was standing over here for much of the time, where is he? Where is the, yes, sir. Thank you so much. What is your name? Ken. Ken, Ken Fujimoto. Um, Ken was giving ideas to, to, to Herbie here about what was going wrong with my machine. And I was very specific that I wanted to do the problem solving on my own. That's kind of the way I like to build. And so I wasn't going to have this be a collaborative process because that's a Pandora's box. I'm not sure what it's going to be like. But I did, the word got back to me that Ken had said that the central geometry of the Strong Base, which is um, these two pivots that are the main pivots for the legs and this central pivot where the camshaft goes, that that relationship was wrong. And I thought, mm, I don't think that it's wrong because it shouldn't make much of a difference. And I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I kept on trying to solve the other problems, eliminate the other variables. And then at 4.30 this, mor this previous morning, I woke with a start and thought, oh, look at the original measurements. I had transferred them carefully into my notebook, all but one. <laughs> And the one that I hadn't transferred was the fact that these three, uh, these three points are not on a line. They actually form a triangle. And that I wanted my triangle, that my, my central crankshaft pivot to be three and a half inches above the line. So then I was up until five trying to figure out the best way to do it. And I cut this thing up in my head about a million different ways before realizing, dummy, there are eight uprights. All I need to do is measure three and a half inches on those, cut each one, and then I used a bunch of tie straps to really force the geometry into something new. Um, which for me is, I, you know, I, I recognize that it, I could have made it go easier by getting it right on the first try. <laughs> but I think that's a, a, it's a generally my lesson in life. Um, I want to make this work for you, and then I would love to take some questions from the audience. But uh, if you'll indulge me, we'll have the inaugural official trip of my strong bike, I guess, is what we call this. All right. Here's hoping that nothing snaps <laughs> on the way. And we, we discovered today that I need to be facing downhill. Oh, hey, these mic packs hurt. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, baby. Yes! Oh! Don't snap. There we go! Whoa. We gotta build some momentum. That's it! Okay, here we go. Yes! I'm crashing into the fence, that's what's happening. There we go. Woo! Oh. 
And as Teo does, Sisyphean, I'm going to push it back into the light. Oh, he's lost his shoe. So, <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Making one of these suckers, and we got lucky because he was a kid. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I recognize that the um, uh, what, I forget what the skull right in the middle. The crankshaft. Yeah, the crankshaft has different angles on each place where you hit, where you hook in the legs. Yes. Is there any general principle between? There is. A, there is totally a general principle. The 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 question is, uh, what is the relationship of the crankshaft's offset? Um, and it's very simple. It's a, the, the the cranks are each. Set offset 120 degrees to their neighbor, so that three of them make a full revolution. As to how the two sides relate to each other, um, Norm went inside yesterday to look at Teo's, and it, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to how he's connected the two sides. It's all over the place. Uh, and I, in fact, made mine not bilaterally symmetrical, but identical, which luckily didn't bone me. Um, how about over here? Yes. Uh, I did tell, so the question was, did I talk to Tao about what I was going to build? I did. He came to my shop for a couple of hours. Um, he's a delightful, wonderful, inquisitive, amazing, avuncular man. Um, and I was worried that steel was somehow violating a central idea. Um, I've been saying this for the last couple of days, but I love that he uses PVC. It's such a... A, a terrible material for mechanical construction. <laughs> and so, I mean, the bots, I used to, one of my first jobs here in San Francisco in the early 90s was working for Chico McMurtry of Morphic Robot Works. Old timers will remember the early machine art community in San Francisco in the 90s. And Chico's robots were always a triumph of Chico's ambition over his lack of engineering skills. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm not saying Teo lacks engineering skills, but each one of his strongbates is sort of a triumph of his, of his will over the material itself, and I like that. I chose steel specifically because I was, uh, it's, a, it's a more forgiving material for me. Uh, and Teo gave me total permission. He said, yeah, I have cheated on the PVC and used steel in the pots. <laughs> um, how about over here? Yes, in the hat. Did I consider a more standard bicycle construction? I did, except that someone's built one of those. <laughs> um, I was really hoping to get on top of this, but I just, I just don't feel like, I, once I built it, I didn't feel like it was gonna, wow, wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. I don't, I don't. There are no children here. Oh, that is so awesome. Oh my god, I had no idea this would work. <laughs> oh, that is, I'm, wow. <laughs> you see how seat of pants this all really is. Well, people, uh, people meet me and they're like, well, you are exactly what I expected. <laughs> oh, um, how about, yes? I have to ask, who came up with the shoes? Who came up with the shoes? I did. Um, I have not seen shoes, and of course, if you're going to put shoes on anything, it has to be red converse high tops. Um, and uh, my friend Tom Sachs designed stuff with Nike, and he reached out to his contact at Nike. I literally mentioned it to him, and two days later, 12 pairs of shoes showed up. So we had destroyed, yeah, 12 shoes. Uh, no, six pairs of shoes showed up. Seven, sorry. Eight, actually. I included one extra pair for screwing up. Um, any women with questions? I'm getting mostly dudes. Where are you? Yes, yes, yes. I really appreciate the fact that you're creative as well as very engineering savvy. Where, when do you find you have the most ideas? You sit up late at night and think, oh my god, I have an idea. Or do you get your ideas mostly during the day when you're tinkering with something? When do I have the most ideas? That's a really good question. You know, I, I keep, I go through, it, it's, it's seasonal. And I don't mean seasonal like summer, spring, fall, winter. I, it's more like 
there are periods of time when I'm drawing every day, all sorts of different things. And then there's periods of time where I'm writing a lot. And then there's, you know, for me right now, I'm, getting, I'm keeping a lot of plates spinning. I'm trying lots of different things. We're getting ready to go to Comic-Con. We're gonna go to New York Comic-Con this year. Oh, we just went to Australia. Um, all those things require ideation. They require thinking about the narratives and how we're gonna do them. Um, and so the, I'm lucky enough that the creativity takes all these different forms of writing and drawing. Um, I really like the process of working and solving the problems as you go with them. So for me, that's what this was all about. It was like, I knew I was going to encounter some stuff. I had no idea it would be as hard as it ended up being. But that was sort of the point. Um, as far as like staying up late at night, I love airplanes. <laughs> so understand, I have twin 17-year-old boys. I am almost never alone in my life. Um, and teenagers are disgusting. But, <laughs> but on an airplane, when I have a long trip, is where I get a lot of creative work done. It's where I can really sink my teeth in. And as long as there's no internet, I can get even more work done. <laughs> but on this last trip to Australia, United now has internet over the Pacific. Yeah, took a, a whole, you know, I was on Reddit the whole time. <laughs> Um, uh, yes? So, may I make sure to add a PVC pipe? Yeah. I'm wondering, so it has this free form idea with it. How are you able to do that with metal? Um, Teo has this free form idea with PVC. How do I do this with metal? I'm actually, I got so much inspiration for how loose his bots really are. His bass. I mean, watching his walk on the beach where like the leg was like this, <laughs> doing this whole thing, I was, I was like, telling myself, you can chill about the rigidity. I, I had specced needle bearings in all of these, and that was ludicrous. I needed lots of slop to make this work, because lot, there's a lot of slop in his, in his base. Um, so, uh, steel, like I said, steel is more flexible for me. It's more forgiving, and it gives me, thank goodness, it's flexible enough that I was able to bend this whole part of the central spine up today in about two hours. Um, Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. How about over here? Yes. What do I think the most important idea of physics and engineering for someone to take home? That physics is a deeply creative field. Um, I think that you know too often when we look at look before MythBusters, I thought of physics as something that smart people did. And don't get me wrong, there are smart people in physics, but if you don't think you're one of them, you're an idiot, right? <laughs> because, because it's not just like for geniuses, it's actually these beautiful sets of equations and understandings about the world, and there's plenty of room to move, there's plenty of room to discover new stuff. The end of any line of questioning is still, I don't know. And to help kids understand that that stuff is, that, that it's creative, that there's room to, to see what's going on instead of just facts to memorize. Thank you. Um, I think about the, that educationally as, you know, I was raised with in two, high school chemistry was a grueling slog because it was just crap to memorize. So I thought of chemistry as just endless amounts of facts. Um, but when you put those facts in a story and the context, they actually make some sense. Uh, and that's, that's when I started, you know, I, Mythbusters really did, by helping me put all those things into stories, turn me into a, a, at least a gentleman scientist by the end, <laughs> without any actual accreditation. Um, oh, yes? Did you have any other ideas for this project? Did I have any other ideas? No, I put all my eggs in this one basket. 